Hi! To sell products and services using a tilde website, use the ST100 shopping cart with an order form block from the store category. With its help, customers will be able to change the quantity of goods and place an order while choosing a convenient delivery option and method of payment. The block has a lot of settings that affect both the shopping cart's appearance and functionality. Let's break down what this block can do and how you can set it up. Let's start with how you can add a product to the cart. There is a brief instruction on that at the very top of the content panel. There are two options. The main option is to use in conjunction with the cart the product cart from the store category. In this case, the item will be added to cart by default without any settings. Additional option using a link of a certain format. You may add an item to cart from any block. Let's take a look at the main option. For example, we are making a leather accessory store and want an item to be added to the cart when you click on it. We need to add an ST100 block from the store category to our web page. Open the preview or publish the page to make sure. If you click on the item, a pop-up opens where you can add the item to the cart. From there, you can configure the appearance of the cart, its behavior, etc. The main thing is that products from all the carts will automatically go to the cart when you click on the title of the item or its picture. Let's go over the second option and see how it works. Using a link of this kind, you can add an item to the cart from absolutely any block. Imagine that there is a blog on the Cooking Workshop landing page listing different participation options. I go over to the content section and write order basic 15 the first card in the link field for the button, order standard 100 in the second, and order advanced 150 in the third. Then I save that and check the preview. When I click on the first button, the basic option gets added to the card. When I click on the second button, the standard option gets added, and so on. This method works for all blocks, including zero blocks. You can add a product to the cart with a click on a circle or an image, as long as you format the link correctly. Let's go back to the content section of the block with the cart. Here, the system first lets you pick where the data from the cart will be sent. If you haven't yet connected to any service, you need to go to the form section in the site settings and pick the one you want. For example, I want orders from my store to end up in both my email and tilde CRM. You can configure the language settings for both system messages, for example, if the user didn't fill in the required field, and messages from data reception services in the same section. Next, check the box of the service you need and it's good to go. All requests from the forms and the shopping cart are automatically saved in lead section. Be sure to check it out to review the accuracy of data and find out the causes of possible errors. Next up is the section with the settings of the order form fields. There are several fields already added here by default, but I'll remove all of them to go through the whole process from the beginning. Let's start with the email field. Make sure to choose the right type of field, there are more than 20 of them on tilde. Each field has a few mandatory parameters. Input placeholder. This is the text that is shown in the field by default until the user clicks on it. Let's write your email here. Input title. This is the caption that will be displayed above the field. Input subtitle. This is, as you can easily guess, the text immediately below the title. And the variable name. This is a system name that allows specifying data from the different fields, which is not visible to users. If the service receiving data from the form requires a particular variable name, you can specify it here. For example, MailChimp has its own predefined variable names. I'll only use the input placeholders, but in general that's up to you. You can also make fields mandatory to fill out, in this case I'll apply that setting to the phone field. Now let's add the name field. The parameters here are all the same. Let's move to the phone field. We need to choose the appropriate type. I can write something like phone number in the placeholder, but in the field of this type you can choose a mask. A mask is a way of formatting data. A mask tells the user what kind of data should be entered and what the number of characters should be, 
all while preventing the field from being filled in any other way. We have a field with a phone, so we can leave the automatic mask with the country code. You can read more about the masks in the Tilda Help Center. This is the field I want to make mandatory, so I'll put a check mark next to it. Let's take a look at the More section. Firstly, you can use it to upload a shopping cart icon, if you don't want to use a standard one. As with the other blocks, the image can be downloaded either from your computer or from an icon collection. You can also change the cart pop-up title. It says your order by default. You can add additional text above the form as well. Here, for example, you can inform the buyer that orders are processed within one day. You can also use it to specify the contact that people can use to find out the status of their order. The order button title can also be changed here. Let's change it to pay for order and the text under form field. In this field, we usually warn the users that they agree to the terms of processing and storing of their personal data and add a link to any agreement, offer or privacy policy. This is required by law. We can write by clicking the button you agreed to the terms of privacy policy here and add a link to a separate page or a pop-up in the right place. For example, at the words privacy policy. You can also set up the message about successful data submissions here. This text will appear when the user fills out the form and clicks the button. If everything works well, they will see either a standard message or the message that you specify here. For example, thank you for your purchase. There is also a field called success page URL. If you want users to go to another web page, if the form is filled out successfully and not stay on this one, you can specify its link here. It's not a required field. Let's save changes and see what happens. An important question is how the buyer will pay for their order. Let's go to the site settings to add payment methods. You can connect one or more payment systems to your website on Tilda. All of them are in this list. Let's connect the Stripe service as an example by specifying data from your personal account. This is just in case if the buyer wants to pay by their bank card. And let's add cash payment on delivery just in case. Now there are two payment options either of which can be selected in the shopping cart. A few more things about the payment settings. Here, in the payment system section, you can change the currency in which prices will be shown on the website, adjust its sign, as well as its position and the divider. And just below there is a link, custom order notification settings, where you can set up email delivery to customers who have placed an order. There are two options. Through a custom server on Google's domain, through SendGrid. In both cases, you first need to specify the technical settings for access the mail server, and then edit the subject and plate of the letter. To do this, you can use standard variables or add your own. Now let's talk about setting up delivery options. If you have a store with a small inflow of orders and you are not yet planning on automating your deliveries, you can set up a fairly simple script. To do this, add delivery variance field in the content section and list the options you want in the variance box. For example, you can provide four delivery options with fixed prices. Now let's move on to the settings of the block with the cart. The first point is about how the shopping cart behaves when you add an item to it. You can choose between two options. Either the cart opens right away when you select an item, or the item is added but the cart remains minimized and you can only see the cart widget in the upper right corner. In cart style, you can set the size of the icon, its color, the color of the circle, the color of the border, and other settings that adjust the appearance of the cart widget. In form input style, you can customize what the fields will look like. You can adjust their color, the color of the text, the styling, and so on. Similarly, in buttons, you can change what the pay for order button will look like in our case. Next, you can adjust the appearance of the cart pop-up by setting the color of the closing icon, the color of the background in the mobile version, etc. In the cart position section, you can adjust the position of the widget by changing the offset settings. There are a lot of interesting and useful things to take note in the last section. More settings. First, 
Here you can set the minimum order amount or the amount below which a customer won't be able to place an order. And a similar parameter, the minimum amount of items. For instance, if you sell stationery in bulk, you can list 100 here, which will mean that if the cart contains less than 100 items, the customer won't be able to place an order. The number of days for saved products in cart is a parameter which is added to the visitor's browser cookie. For example, if you want the user to reassemble the order each time he or she revisits the site, set it to zero. If you check do not save product in cart, then a widget won't appear when you close the cart and the item will be added anew each time. This can come in handy if you don't have a store that sells physical goods. Maybe you have an online course website and don't want the checkout process to look like you're buying a wallet or something like that. The forbid product quantity changing box can also come in handy when you're selling digital goods, like non-tangible goods or those that can't touch with your hands. That means that their quantity can be adjusted. The same course will always remain the same. The send data to analytics system when product is added to cart box will allow you to track the effectiveness of sales on the website. You'll be able to see not only the number of users who have paid for their order, but also the number of items added to the cart. This will help you to draw the right conclusions and make better decisions. That completes setting up the cart. Let's publish the page and check out our results. So we've got a one-page store. But if you need a multi-page store, what about the shopping cart? Should we add it to all our pages? Here is a solution for that. Add a block with a shopping cart to the header or footer. If you are already using a header for a menu, for example, you can add the cart block there. If you don't have one yet, then create an empty page, paste in the block with a cart and assign the page as a header. Now, every time you publish a new page, the shopping cart will automatically be added to it. It'll be easier to add it and modify for all the store's pages at once. Let's check out our final result. When you click on any of the products, they're added to the cart. Here, you can choose a convenient delivery option and method of payment. After someone completes an order, the data will go straight to your mailbox and the tilde CRM. Use the shopping cart to quickly set up convenient sales of products and services on your website, be it handmade jewelry or online yoga lessons. You can also find detailed instructions on how to use the shopping cart in the Tilda Help Center. Good luck!